there's a finality about today that is really painful. And so that's why it's important that we gather together as we are doing. We're celebrating Walter and we're thanking God for the extraordinary gift he was to each of us gathered here this afternoon. And indeed to the city and this province and this great nation. Walter was your father, your father-in-law, your grandpa, your friend. He was also Lord Mayor of Branford, God's country, as he liked to call it, the world's greatest hockey dad, a beloved national treasure. Wayne recalls one time uh, calling his mum in the early stages of Walter's recovery after his aneurysm in 1991, his dad had boarded a flight from Toronto to Vancouver, who was going to be there to meet him and help him when he arrived. Phyllis said, well, don't, don't worry, everyone knows Walter, he'll be looked after just fine, which of course he was. Walter, in many ways, belonged to us all. Now, for the service this afternoon, everything that you need is going to be on the screen. Uh, your responses are the ones highlighted in yellow. I'm going to invite you now, please, to be seated as Wayne comes forward to share some reflections on his father's life. Thank you. And uh, obviously, with the pandemic that we've had, um, it's been horrible for everyone throughout the world, in Canada, North America. I really wanted to tell everyone that um, my dad and my sister and our family were so conscious of it that COVID had nothing to do with the passing of my father. Unfortunately, a few weeks ago, uh, he sustained a bad hip injury. And uh, as he just said earlier, we thought weeks ago that the end was here. He has tremendous amount of faith, faith like I've never seen, but he had a love for life and he didn't want to leave. And we were 21 days sitting with him and just enjoying life. And we got a chance and an opportunity to tell stories. Our grandchildren have never seen my dad after his brain aneurysm and we, we were telling them all, you're thankful that you didn't know him before his brain aneurysm because he was a lot tougher. <laughs> so it's been a tough time. I want to thank everyone in the community who dropped off food, who dropped off sandwiches. They knew we were all there for 21 days. My sister was a champ. She was beside him each and every minute of the day. The grandkids were wonderful. My dad and mom, I know, are so proud. So I thought I would tell a couple of stories. I didn't know. I spent the last four nights talking with my wife, Janet, thinking what I was going to say. And like I usually do, I try to just kind of wing it and speak from my heart. Um, so years ago, uh, as everyone knows, my dad was such a huge sports fan and hockey guy. And we were playing in a hockey tournament outside of Toronto. And my dad was so proud of the fact we we're going to play against better teams than little towns in this area. And on a Friday night, we were going to the tournament, and my mom said to him, Walter, we're going to have this baby this weekend. And he said, it's okay, you can wait till we get back. <laughs> so, Brant was born on the Saturday. <laughs> we went to this tournament in uh, Whitby, Ontario. We played against good teams like Burlington, Oshawa, Hamilton, Toronto, Marley's, Nationals. We won the tournament. We got in the car and we weren't sure if the car could get us back from Oshawa to Brantford. So we finally got back, and the next day, mom came home with Brent. People were coming by, families, friends, sisters. Congratulations on the baby. And every single person would say to my dad, Walter, I can't believe you missed the birth of your son. So our next door neighbor, Mary Rosetto, came over. She was the last person to come over. She said, Walter, I can't believe you missed 
the birth of Brent. And when she walked out the door, he was so mad, he stood up and he grabbed the trophy and he goes, yes, but we got the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> so as time goes on, he was so nice to all the grandchildren. Every grandchild loved him, close to each and every one of them. They understood how important he was, not only to our family, but to the culture of Canada. He came here, his family is an immigrant. They came here because they wanted a better life. I don't think I've ever met a prouder Canadian than my dad. And all my five children are American, born in the United States. And I always tell them, you should be as proud of the United States as your grandfather is of Canada, because that's how much he loves the country. So <clears throat> I always tell my kids, you know, there's nothing better in life than family. So my dad would come every year to our summer house, my son Ty, Trevor, Tristan. They had a um, uh, hockey school, and dad would come out. He'd go to the rink, sign autographs like he always does. And we were playing golf one day, and he's picking up golf balls. And I'm like, we have all these golf balls. What are all these golf balls for? And finally, the next day, Ty, Trevor, and Tristan, my friend Mike and Tom, they're in the fairway, they're in the rough, they're grabbing all these balls. And I finally grab them. I said, you guys got to stop grabbing golf balls. And they're like, what do you mean? Your dad wants them for the kids. I said, I know he wants them for the kids, but I got to sign them for the kids. <laughs> so I take my dad to the airport at 5 a.m. Sure enough, we get to the airport, and there's these two big bags. And my brother Glenn, he runs out of the car. He's going to get a cup of coffee. And my dad goes, you'll sign these for the kids, right? I'm like, oh my god. So there I was signing <laughs> for hours. But well, that's how he was. He just, he was a remarkable man who loved life, loved family. We'd be a way better world if there were so many more people like my dad. Very special. We're all hurting. This is a tough time. I'm so proud of the fact that so many people have reached out and given him such great tributes because he deserves it. He has the heart of gold and just wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Wayne. Sarita and Brandon are now going to sing for us How Great Thou Art.
O God, the maker and redeemer of all, grant us with your servant Walter and all the faithful departed the sure benefits of your son's saving passion and glorious resurrection, that in the last day when you gather up all things in Christ, we may with them enjoy the fullness of your promises. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite now uh, Avery and Kayla to come forward to deliver our first reading from Ecclesiastes. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, and a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you both. I'm going to now invite our Austin and Zach to come forward to deliver our second reading. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. And I will show you a still more excellent way if I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. The word of the Lord. We're going to remain seated as Sarita and Brandon sing a setting of the 23rd Psalm.
going to invite you please to stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Lord be with you. Also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Won't you please be seated. I think he was right uh, when he said that there were kind of three things in Walter's life. Family, hockey and church. And he loved all three with a passion. Wayne shared some reflections on his dad's love of family and of hockey. I want to talk briefly about the man of God that Walter unquestionably was. Walter didn't attend this church every Sunday when he could because he was trying to impress or out of a sense of duty. While his faith was too real for that. He loved God and he loved this church. What made uh, Walter's faith so real for me was that he was a guy who walked the talk. The only thing that counts, wrote St. Paul to the church at Galatia two millennia ago, is faith expressing itself through love. Walter expressed his faith working through love. Didn't know Walter pre-aneurysm, so I don't have a before and an after with which I can compare. The Walter I knew and loved, the man of God that he was, was a man who related to us through his heart. As the saying goes, saying goes uh, Walter's memory was good, it was just short. There were significant periods of his life that were no longer accessible to him. And perhaps in some ways that's what enhanced his capacity to relate to us, as Walter did. How many of us have heard Walter say to us, you're special? And it means something to us because Wally meant what he said. We were special to him. He made us feel important because to him, we were important. He gave us the time we needed. He was never too busy for us. And it didn't really matter who we were. Sure, over the years, Wally has shared meals with political leaders and celebrities alike. I've served with him on Wednesday evenings at Daily Bread, the community meal program here in town down at Grace Church. There Wally would be, handing out trays, helping with cutlery, joking with clients. He treated all of us just the same. Many of you will know what it was like trying to go to a restaurant with Wally. If other people weren't stopping by the table to shake his hand, uh, he'd be up and doing the rounds of the restaurant himself. As Wayne quipped, it was easier to get time during a meal with the Prime Minister. And Walter was great with kids. Our kids. All those kids he coached in minor league over the years, those kids who came up to him for his autograph, and he always had those pieces of paper stuffed in his pocket in order, to, in order to be able to oblige. Walter's faith 
expressed itself in being there for us. Now, the Heart and Stroke Foundation biography that Glenn had a hand in putting together states that after Walter recovered from his stroke, he discovered a calling in helping others. Whether it was raking leaves for a neighbour or raising money for charities that are close to his heart. Walter's faith found expression not only in being there for us, but in what he did for us. You know, I, I can still recall pulling into the St. Mark's lot out the back here on a miserable fall afternoon, not long after we had arrived in Brantford. The black jag was parked there at an odd angle. Looked like Wally had jumped out of the car while it was still moving. And there he was, bent over, stacks of leaf bags already full, working away on his own. I remember going over to him and thanking him and pleading him to pack it in. Well, you probably know how far I got with that. I went inside and asked uh, Kathy, our parish coordinator, what was going on. And I still remember Kathy just shrugging her shoulders and saying, we can't stop him. It's just Walter. And it wasn't just the leaves. He'd pick up Daniel for church, who for those who don't know is visually impaired. He'd bring Avery to Sunday school, who lives a few doors down from where he is. And he'd speak to various events at the drop of a hat, especially those involving the various charities that he supported. CNIB, Heart and Stroke, the Family Foundation he helped set up. And Walter was generous. He was always generous. Walter's faith expressed itself in doing things for us. And lastly, Walter's faith express, expressed itself in love not only in being there for us and what he did for us, but in how he spoke to us. There's a line from his biography that I love about his advice. The only advice I thought made any sense he said, mainly be genuine and keep it simple. Now, what made this advice so compelling for me was that Wally lived it. He was genuine, kind, and in all the accolades that he received over the years, Walter Gretzi remained a deeply humble man. That's for real, cross my heart, honest to God. He spoke the truth. Wally's word was his bond. Like Wayne, he was a great storyteller. He entertained us. He knew how to make us feel good and good about ourselves. And he stood up for what he believed in. Woe betide any event planner who hadn't organized someone to say grace before a meal. It wasn't beyond Walter to stop the festivities and go to the microphone himself. And he impressed upon you, he impressed upon his family that any special talents they had were gifts. They were God-given gifts. And he loved to recount the story of his sister, Ellen, who lived with Phyllis and Wally after Grandma Gretzky died. Now, Ellen had Down syndrome. And as Wally recounted the story, she didn't know one day from another. Yet every Sunday morning, he would tell us, she would come into the bedroom and shake Wally's shoulder and say, Church Wawa, Church Wawa, cross my heart. How did she know that? Isn't that amazing? He'd say to us. And it was to his beloved grandchildren that, and believe me, the grandchildren were beloved, that Walter dedicated his biography. 
Paulina, Ty, Trevor, Tristan, Emma, Nathan, Austin, Austin, Zachary, Kayla, Dylan, Luke, Avery and Mila. It's all there in the front piece. May this inspire you to realize there is no such word as can't. Walter's faith found expression in how he spoke with us. So back in the second century, St. Irenaeus wrote that the glory of God is a person fully alive. Now, that brain aneurysm that Walter suffered back on October 13, 1991, could have meant for him a vastly diminished life. But it didn't, did it? Not for Walter Gretzky. Despite all the challenges, and with extraordinary support from his family and friends and the healthcare community, by God's grace, as Wally would want me to acknowledge, he became even more fully alive. This man of God expressed his faith through his love and how he was with us and all that he did for us and how he spoke with us. Our assurance this afternoon is that the same God, the one who is the author and perfecter of that faith we saw in Wally, through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ, now receives Walter into God's very self. Now, this is a painful day for us. Another chapter in our lives is drawing to a close. We're all going to miss Wally. So please, please, please make time to keep sharing the stories, to remember anniversaries, to honor the extraordinary legacies that Walter Gretzky has left us. At the same time this afternoon, we're celebrating. We're celebrating all the ways in which his faith, expressing itself through love, radiated so strongly in his life. And we thank and praise God this afternoon, not only for the gift of a truly remarkable life, but for that peace beyond all understanding that Walter now enjoys, secure in God's loving embrace for all eternity. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. together in one communion 
in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. Hear us, Lord. May all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection die to sin and rise to newness of life, and may we with him pass through the grave and gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Hear, Hear us, us, Lord. Lord. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Hear, Hear us, Lord. Lord. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Hear yes, us, Lord. Lord. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Hear yes, us, Lord. Lord. Give courage and faith to those who were bereaved especially Wayne, Kim, Keith, Glenn, and Brent, and their families, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. Hear us, Lord. Grant us grace to entrust Walter to your never-failing love, which sustained him in his life. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, and remember him according to the favor you bear for your people. Hear us, Lord. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please turn to one another with no contact as we give a message of hope and peace to one another.
going to invite you now, please, to stand as you are able. As we pray, God of mercy, accept this worship we offer you this day. Increase, we pray, our faith, deepen our hope, and confirm us in your eternal love. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. We give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose victorious rising from the dead has given to us the hope of resurrection and the promise of eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation and calling Israel to be your people in your words spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. From these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the saviour and redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this cup. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the, whole, of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we made acceptable in him may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Saviour taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the bread which has come down from heaven. Those who eat this bread will live forever. Friends, these are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. I invite you now please to sit or kneel. Uh, the Anglican Communion Table is open to baptised uh, members of whichever denomination. We welcome you this afternoon to receive the sacrament. If you don't wish to receive, uh, please feel free to come forward. We simply ask that you cross your arms over your chest so that we know to give you a blessing rather than the sacrament. Now, during COVID, things were a little different for receiving. Uh, we receive in one kind only, so just bread only. Uh, there are going to be two stations for communion uh, on either side of, of Walter's casket. Uh, so if you'd please form a line in the centre aisle and then go to either of the stations. We ask that you receive and then step aside, remove your mask, consume, and then the sanitizer on either side for, for you to wash your hands after you've uh, communicated. And then back to your seats.
Can I invite you please to stand as you are able? As we pray. God of love, you have fed us at the table of your kingdom. Teach us to trust without fear in your eternal goodness and mercy. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. I'm going to join now in a, an anthem which the church has been praying for hundreds of years at this time. For those who wish, we join together. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of all, and we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sighing but life everlasting. everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Saviour, we commend your servant Walter. Acknowledge, we pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and to the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Just might add, this uh, funeral pall is one that hung on Phyllis's casket as well, so a lovely sense of family connection there too. My sisters and brothers, the final blessing. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those whom you love and care for this day and forever. Amen. Amen. My friends, go in peace, in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. I'm going to invite you now, please, to be seated as we uh, uh, enjoy a video tribute. Thank you. Just before we do that, I would on your, on behalf of the family, want to thank very much uh, the community of St. Mark's for having hosted uh, uh, this service. All those have been working hard to ensure that we are, uh, abide by COVID protocol. I want to give thanks to uh, Archdeacon Janet, who was the interim rector here, to Archdeacon Jim, uh, who was a former rector, uh, to Alison Clark at the organ console, and to Brandon Cork and Sarita Perkins, who have are sung for us. Thank you. And we have been watching the funeral service for Walter Gretzky at Mar St. Mark's Anglican Church in Bradford, Ontario. And as you heard there from the, the Anglican priest who is presiding over today's funeral, they are now moving into a video tribute to Walter Gretzky. Uh, we do not know if they're actually going to share that with us. We will bring you to it should that actually happen. But I do want to bring in right now Jamie Strachan from CBC Sports. Of course, we were speaking to him before the funeral began. And Jamie, a beautiful service to, to remember a man uh, who Wayne Gretzky described as a man who loved life, a man who loved family, uh, uh, a man who, if we followed his example, this world would be a better place, said Wayne Gretzky. Uh, talk to us about what stood out for you as we heard uh, his son Wayne deliver the eulogy uh, right off uh, in the early part of this funeral service. Well, you know, I think, you know, three words, you know, family, faith, and hockey, and I think, 
you know, the two anecdotes that, you know, Wayne Gretzky uh, told, you know, really captured, you know, who Walter Gretzky was uh, as a person for those who, you know, who didn't know him. You know, first off, his, his love of hockey, you know, the first anecdote that, uh, that Wayne Gretzky shared about, you know, going to a hockey tournament uh, and, and, and at the time his mom Phyllis was pregnant with his, uh, you know, then, you know, to be brother uh, Brent and, uh, and, and Walter, you know, uh, missed the birth of, of, of Brent to be at this hockey tournament and, you know, returned home after and everyone was giving him a hard time about missing, uh, you know, missing the birth of his son and as after the last person kind of chided him for, for missing the birth and left the house, you know, Wayne recounted how Walter, you know, held, held up the trophy and said, you know, at least we got the trophy, you know, a, a little tongue in cheek, but, you know, his love of, uh, his love of hockey certainly kind of shining through there. A and also the kind of the second anecdote that uh, Wayne Gretzky told about, you know, Walter Gretzky's penchant, you know, for picking up, you know, golf balls on the golf course and, and encouraging others, uh, you know, to do so. And, you know, Wayne giving him a hard time because, you know, he knew that <laughs> in the end this, uh, this loot of golf balls that Walter Gretzky would find would uh, eventually be put in front of him, uh, you know, to sign uh, for the kids as a uh, as Wayne put it in, uh, you know, ba basically relaying how, you know, when he got in the car to go to the airport, there were two, you know, huge baskets of, uh, of golf balls that, that, Wayne Gre that Wayne Gretzky had to sign uh, that Walter Gretzky would then give out, uh, you know, to kids through the various charities that, uh, that he worked with. You know, also heard from uh, Wayne Gretzky about his father's love for this country, and, um, you know, he, he Acknowledge the fact that his five kids uh, were, were born and raised in the United States, and and basically how he told them, if you if if you love the United States uh, uh, as much as my dad uh, loved Canada, you know the world would be uh, be a better place.